So non-duality. So the seeing of oneness is assumed to bring an awful lot of changes and I think the longer, you know, I had my awakening, my awakening in 2012, so the longer, you know, more time passes and you look at this and it's kind of more mysterious than ever in all sense because there's a lot of stuff it doesn't change and I'm realizing that more and more. So people come and they're looking for a quick fix and I don't know. There's a lot of things associated with this that I think don't belong to it in terms of the psychological. But anyway, so non-duality is the seeing that of nothing and everything and So it's the end of identifying with the person. You're not what you thought you were. So that falls away. And what is revealed is, is love. And love is always the case. And it's unconditional love. And it includes everything. So there's a coming to rest. There's a coming to coming to where you are, there's a, the heart opens and a lot of the defenses are blown in this as well. So there's all the pains, all the regrets and the struggles of the past tend to dissolve in this, you know, life goes on as well. So. And it can be quite dramatic, or it can be a, seem to be a slow process of just a falling away of it's, it's the doorbell. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll pause you in. born into oneness and oneness was just the case and you can see that with a newborn child you can see the Buddha nature of a baby it's coming mesmerizing to look into a baby's eyes they just seem to be astonished and mesmerized by what's around and they seem to be full of a kind of knowledge or you know and I think when you recognise that, and I think maybe, I don't know whether you've had an awakening or not, but it's so vivid, it's so, um, so obvious. Hi. Hi. You can move forward a bit if you want here. Right back there if you want. I'll move to this second. Okay. But we begin to recognize our name on our form on people as objects in the world. So a sense of separation comes and and for some of us if we're lucky, maybe later on it falls away, but now it's kind of known it's sort of you know, we can speak about this not very easily because it doesn't lend itself to language. Because everything that can be said about this isn't it either. It's oh. so there's a sense of someone in here and the world outside and that collapses and the sense of time. So there's the identity, thought based identity is time. So Identity falls away with that, and there's just the timeless. And 
there are states of absorption that vary in degree, so when we sit or when we're walking around, there's not that not that sort of constriction being drawn into the mind because that's no longer who I am. There is no replacement for that. It's not like discovery of a bigger self or something like that. It's just that that falls away. And there's a coming into rest, into where you are and you're seeing for the first time in the sense that you're actually able to use your perception, which is tends to be amplified because you haven't really, you get so used to seeing through the mind that everything's kind of dulled and the beauty, the sense of beauty um, and stillness is very absorbing. So we start to see that The sacred and everything, so me just sitting and seeing the stillness that permeates everything and the perfection that's there, the perfection that has no opposite, it's, it's just a kind of radical acceptance of everything that's encountered and there's a sense of community there, there's a sense of you know, there's no other, and so there's this love and intimacy with all of life that perhaps was, you know, never experienced. Obviously, the baby experiences that, and the baby's very vivid in its perception and its experience of life, but this brings it back. So the filters are blown and everything is experienced as fresh. So the radical acceptance means the end of arguing with the way things are. They may be bad, you might come across like you might have a really bad period in life with struggle, but there's you don't expect struggle not to be like struggle. It is what it is in the sense of like if anger arises, if fear arises, that's not struggled with in the sense that it's okay. Everything's kind of okay. And so there's much more of an ability to be with your experience. And even if there is a pushing away, that's accepted too, because there's nothing outside of that acceptance. And So in a way it's a chance to start over. For a lot of people this is a chance to start over, which can happen in other ways for other people as well, if it's not awakening some, maybe some insight or whatever. Um, if you're in psychotherapy or you're suddenly just getting insights in life, there can be this ability to turn a corner. But this is there's no going back from this once it's kind of seen and, you know, some people have glimpses and then there seems to be a return to a constricted state or some people are left experiencing just the emptiness, which is the absolute void, and but the love's not there, so there's still this sort of going through life, going through the motions of life without the love aspect. So it can be the loss of motivation in that, which isn't particularly nice, but it's not unpleasant either. It's just a lot of desires can fall away in that. But this has got nothing to do with desire being there or not being there or because desires can arise as can anything arise and conflict but it is conflict is conflict you know the mind can be seen more clearly it can create all sorts of things
but it's seen through. So there's, there's an increase in awareness, an increase in awareness of what's experienced, you know, internally, externally. But people can still be seeing through distortion as well. There may be repression still there. It's not the, it's not a big fix for everything. But there seems to be an increasing, you know, increase in awareness that seems to continue. Does anyone have any questions? You said the mind is seen through because that's not who I am. But what is that I? That's uh, well, it's it seemed to be arising spontaneously, but it doesn't mean so. Yeah, you're you're not this, but it doesn't mean that. I mean, in another sense, life is intensely personal. So, in another sense, you're not not this too. But it's it's a very different relationship with that, and so the sense of location isn't here. So it doesn't mean that this doesn't matter, or that um, there's a kind of. Um, <coughs> like disassociation from life or something like that or you know but the mind stream is seen to be yeah not self-generated you know you take it for granted you, you you think that that's you and that's what you're you know that's what you're creating somehow but that that i mean you can kind of see through that a little bit yourself if you look because you you're not generating thoughts Although, like, after awakening, the thought stream can completely drop away, or it can come and go, but it's generally slower, and but it doesn't have the same sting as before. But, you know, that's... But there's an intimacy with that, too. It's not like, disregard your thoughts. I mean, we need our thoughts and our feelings to navigate life. We just do, and if we ignore that, we end up in a lot of mess sometimes. But, but yeah, that's... In the seeing of emptiness, that's what I saw was the first thing I saw was that was just happening, as is the body, and the body seems not to be there at all, like experience of a body, in a sense, like the weight on the chair, you know, that's there, but there's a kind of lightness or a almost like spirit that's experienced. Here. I mean, everybody says different things, subtle, subtle different things about this, but that's in an experiential way, that's one of the differences I recognise is, is that. Um, and the, but there's, you know, like when you integrate this as well, there's a real appreciation of the history and the life and goals and aspirations that are there. So. There's a coming into life as well. That's what I've experienced, and I know other people experience that too. So it's it's kind of precious. It feels very precious, this, and kind of like a gift. And I can't really say why that is, um, but it it does seem important to me. And you can continue to grow and evolve, and that's exciting. Um, but yeah. There's more acceptance of what's gone before, so say the failures, the struggle, it's just not your fault. That's the wonderful thing in a way, because you know, you didn't create that. It's what was arising, it's in a way it's kind of sweet in that sense because um I, w I really suffered for a lot of failure and inability to kind of make life work because it really seemed to suck for me like but that doesn't seem to matter now like it's just it, it 
really isn't because I guess as well you're not judging from the same standard like it's not you know say you're not the doer um, it's all just kind of happening and so there's a freedom from success and failure which doesn't mean to say you don't have goals and aspirations and want things to work out because I do I do have goals and Oh, you're asking about the mind. Does that answer your question <laughs> or what? <laughs> it seems so intensely you when, when you're identified with the mind body, you know, like it seems so incontrovertibly you. And that's quite surprising when it's seen through. And, and not particularly nice. I didn't experience that as nice. I mean, that was before I experienced unconditional love. I was like, what the hell? What, what is this? It's just, you know, I just thought everybody knew, knew that. I didn't think I discovered something. I thought everybody knows that. So it just seemed, but everybody experiences this differently. They maybe <coughs> not the mind will flag up like that. You know, it's, it depends how this is seen. And, and uh, when I realised there was no one here, I thought I was mad. Mm. So, uh, you know, because um, <laughs> it sounds like a mad thing to say, but except for the fact that it was visceral. So the, the fact that this had no weight or didn't seem to have any physicality to it, or to, to what I am, essentially, that is not mad you know it's not it's just it wasn't in anything i'd read well it might have been stuff i'd read but i never read it and understood it because obviously it's beyond the mind you you can read about non-duality but the cows come home but until you've experienced it or some people actually even before they've experienced it they recognize that people are talking about something they haven't known and that's kind of like humility. I didn't have that. I was like, I must understand that. It must be a metaphor, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's literal. So I wasn't expecting, I couldn't conceive of anything that couldn't be described um, or taught or, you know, understood. And of course, understanding is the mind. So doesn't make any sense and then but it's just experienced but by no one and yeah and then life changes after that I mean that's the coming home that's and there's so many things said about that and you've probably heard them all <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it can take a while to, 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 to own this and people wonder what the hell you mean by this but even even the most radical seeing of this if your mind is a mind that tends to doubt it might go on doubting in spite of incontrovertible facts it might you know it might just be that you've always been making yourself so small that you sort of think, oh my god, you know, I can't have realised, this can't be what they're talking about. But there tends to be a dropping way of that. And I'm not really, I mean, this is no, after a while it doesn't seem important at all, non-duality, the whole goddamn thing around it, because other stuff seems much more interesting. So, <laughs> like the sense of authority, that goes. But at least it goes in in terms of spiritual teachers. It will go in terms of that. It will go in terms of... It may go in terms of a lot of other authority as well, or it may not. So there may be some, depending on the person and their own levels of repression, I think. There still can be this sort of subtle... looking up to or idealization that goes on at least for a time um,
but it rules, it doesn't rule out anything either. I mean, anything can be the case, you know, my curiosity about other states, being other dimensions, all that stuff fell away. And now I would say I'm much more, I'm very curious about that stuff because I've experienced stuff and so, you know, I'm, I'm curious about what this is, even though there are no answers to it and there can never be any answers to it. Um, You spoke about authority. Um, in your experience, the, does the does the looking to external authority kind of fall away because it's replaced by some kind of internal authority, or no? Just well, the, the, this. Oh, sorry. Go on. Or just there's there's no hierarchy whatsoever. It's just. Well, interesting to say no hierarchy, because, yeah, I mean, that's ex that's experience, but you might see someone as knowing more, or... There's a realisation, I think, that we're relational beings, and that um, if you're with someone who's shut down, who's not emotionally open, who's not being honest with their experience, it makes it harder for you to be, so we grow through each other, so the more open the people we're with are, in a sense, the more we can grow, so... I don't think it's a like a, you know, okay, so authority can fall away, but we're still subject to the people around us, like they how they influence us and how giving ourselves permission to think for ourselves. Very often, that's a relational process as well. Like if you have the luxury of, you know, we we don't sit in a vacuum and 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 think things out for ourselves as well. I think we learn through others too so but also you know if people have idealized their parents say and in terms of in spite of abuse and they haven't seen through that then it's likely they will still see you know I you'll still hear people say oh I like women who are strong or I like strong men and you realize that they confuse aggression with strength and so there's still this what they will look to for authority and other subjects will be be based on their psychopathology rather than, um, you know, we're it's, we're con we're continually seeing through our psychic ap apparatus too. I mean, there's that, you know, set in absolute stillness where the mind is completely in cessation. Then there is just what there is. But even then, there's still a knowing of what's around you. There's still a recognition of being in a room and being in a talk and did I go off topic? <laughs> 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 oh, it's not possible to go off this topic, is it? No, it's not really. Yeah. Has your sense of like authority, is it completely gone for you? Did it go straight away or um yes and no actually. My initial response was yes, but I guess there was still because one thing drops into me, I, 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 I would say yes, and yet I see that six months after after the shift in me, I encountered a teacher, um, a, what appeared to be a strong male teacher, um, and he was the first of his like that I'd seen, maybe, maybe since the guy who did my original process. Right. Um, and I remember, yeah, it just, I hadn't thought of it for a decade, but um, yeah, I broke down in his arms, you know, I just, I heard him do a talk and, and what he said kind of 
resonated and reflected what was going on inside of me so strongly that I was just like, oh, and yeah, I literally just sobbed like a baby in his arms. You know? Wow. Uh. Just at that recognition, you know, and that kind of, that someone who not only understood, but, but yeah, seemed to be so strong in that knowledge that I could literally, oh, thank God, you know, somebody I can surrender to, you know, somebody who not only gets me, but actually, yeah, you seem like you're, you're the mother of all containers right now. And great, you're the, you're the arms I've been looking for. And I, yeah, I just wept like a child. I think some people have, you know, a not so good experience of like, particularly in cults and stuff where they see that something's happened with somebody and they confuse them back into, you know, maybe this isn't it, so they go back into seeking and that, that happens quite frequently as well, you know, the, mm. more the sort of abuse of power, but yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, he was only passing through and uh, I mean, you know, the whole Me Too thing happened in, in the following years and his was one of the names, along with every other spiritual teacher that I'd met really. Right. You know, the, but yeah, I saw his name came up at one point, you know, people were saying, oh, you know, looking at the kind of work he did, I could imagine it might get a bit edgy. All right, okay. Um, his main thing was he did like uh, full body energetic orgasms. Um, okay, right, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. What's his number? <laughs> <laughs> but mostly on women. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprise. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit sexist, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the great mud slinging that followed is was is, is one of the names daubed on the wall. But it's funny, even in those cases, you you will get people who've had these great experiences with them too, as well, because the, the guy, you know, the guy that did my process, the guy that changed my life. Yeah, he's he's also, and and I can I can see why also, you know. Yeah. I've I've not kind of it's it's interesting, isn't it, when you encounter teachers that you know so here's the guy who changes my life and yet I can see I see the human also you know yeah in process in workshops I was like oh, oh <laughs> what's that right which it's just the truth of us all right yeah nobody uh, is that and that alone I know I think that's a shocking thing you know and it's people just don't want to believe that aspect of it, it has to be, this has to be the association of whatever it is, cling on to something, you know, that there's compassion there. Yeah, and there might be compassion for people on fucking movies, they might cry their eyes out, but they might be horrible to their family or some shit. Do you know, like, it's very easy to be compassionate about people in abstract, but actually people you're closest to, that's more telling, isn't it? And so, I don't know. It gets, I think over time, it gets less and less like it is depicted in the books and it's just life, isn't it? It's just life with, you know, greater awareness and, and, and also not deriving, you know, the story arises and it falls away, it arises, falls away. When it arises, it comes with what it comes with. For some people that might be more problematic than for others, but there's more freedom from that, you know, and depending, some would say the depth of this, be more peace, more inner quiet, unless, you know, need to access that. But I, for me, I mean, I think thinking is fun as well, you know, like the whole human experience is, is fun and so, you, you know, except when something shit's happening, but most of the time it's kind of fun. And the emptiness, the, the sitting in bliss states of no mind are lovely, and I think that was very regenerative for me, like just, but it's actually nice to have both. It really is, and I, I think it's good to enter life again and the excitement of that, because I can see why, you know, it's like, well, you might as well have the human experience too, because it's, like and all the stuff that you maybe haven't actualized i mean you're given a chance to start again in a way so there's more chance if if your problem was 
low self-esteem, which a lot of us have, it kind of it, it seems less relevant. It doesn't stand in the way. What, what do you need that for? I think there's more willingness to take risks and try things out. You know, who needs self-esteem? <laughs> like, the, so in that sense, it's good, I think. This isn't really a question, I don't think, but I, I find myself in a funny position because there's some things disappeared of them, a large amount of self consciousness and social anxiety and just gone, which is great. And uh, I feel I just feel really peaceful. I can just sit on my bed, just chilling out, looking out at the trees and like. But I still I just don't understand a lot of like even like non duality, what it is, and like um, just the concepts when people talk about everything and nothing. Even the story just it seems real to me. Like I don't just see it as see it as fake, and maybe that hasn't been like a deepening. Maybe if I, if I sat long enough. The penny will drop, and I go, "Oh, that's why they say everything nothing." But I've also got to the point where I realised that I was sitting there trying to understand it. I was like, "Well, that's kind of seeking as well." So I was just like, "Ah, oh, fuck it." And then, and then that made me feel more chilled out. And it's like I still don't get it, but I sort of don't really. I'm not so bothered about it now. So yeah, you don't need to get it, no, and and it's not it doesn't no. mean it's seeking just because you're trying to figure right. out. Okay, yeah. it really isn't. Yeah. You, of course, it's in a sense, unless for you, it's so obvious and that doesn't mm. doesn't reflect the nature of the awakening anyway like you, you might be just trying to you know some people watch one youtube video after another just going yes are they talking about it well i don't know right. and then certain things can just fall into place later go oh right, right i right. see okay you know there's, there's a lot of it that does resonate like yes i totally i watch some of the videos like yes that yes and then there's other stuff I'm like oh what is this everything and nothing i don't know. But I've always been quite slow anyway on the uptake, so maybe it'll take a while and I go, oh, yeah. I don't know. But it really, it does, at the moment, it just doesn't matter at all. Like I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just so relieved that I don't have to go running around and, you know, trying to make stuff work. It's well, like, that's it. You're sitting on your bed, right? It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. And last night I had these cra crazy Kriya, and I get these, like, tiny uh, visions, like, premonitions. Like, it's like it's telling me what's going to happen in a sort of vision. So I'll be looking on my bed. Like last night I had this men, so I'm looking at my bed, and then there's like these uh, utensils, like um, like surgery utensils, and sometimes the visions uh -huh. are very clear, sometimes they're a bit, and these were really clear, like a knife and a thing, and it was like, oh no, it's going to do some deep <laughs> surgery on me, and, then, and, and, it, and it told me to sat up, and then my neck just went, <laughs> like all the way back, and I could barely breathe, I was like, <laughs> back on my bed, sitting oh. like that, for, for that for ages. And then I was like, can you give me a minute, please? Can you give me a rest? <laughs> it's crazy. I've been like lying on the floor. And then so, so sometimes it's like really peaceful. And I'm just sat there chilling. And then this mad energy comes like, and it's like, and it feels angry. Like it's pissed. It's just like fucking angry. It's like this passion or something. But it's like healing stuff in my like a trap nerve, like shooting beams of energy into it. Like, wow. Okay. And, and I'm on the floor and it's doing that. But it's got, it's like a passion to it. It's like a, it's pissed. It's like it's, it's like I'm not. I'm fucking sick. And I think it's like we were saying. It's like I think I was always had very low esteem, like a pushover, like. Nah, nah. And mm -hmm. it's just like this. This it's the counterbalance of that. So it feels. It's like okay. I'm not fucking taking it. Damn it! <laughs> 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 wow. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's good. And I've got like synchronicities and stuff going on. I, I don't know. It's good. The, the one on the throat chakra then, what, what, like afterwards, what was it like? Well, interesting, because I, <laughs> so I work in a nursery with children, uh -huh. and, uh, and I go in, and we, we're really short staff, like we, we, don't, we don't have any enough staff, and uh, there was this one day, there was just kids everywhere, just screaming, and I really love these kids, like I, I had an experience again with the Kundalini, my heart just went, like, I felt it go, get bigger, <laughs> Because I was thinking about the kids and just like how much I love them and stuff like that. Yeah. So anyway, I love, I love these kids and, and they're great. But but the but because they without the stuff, so some of them were crying and I couldn't I couldn't pay them any attention. And you know, there's kids that uh, like they've got parents who are pregnant, so they're not getting attention at home. And I just see them in a corner looking forlorn, and I want to go and help them. And I can't. And I was just stressing out. And I was like, 
I just went on this massive rant. I was like, we do not do not have enough stuff. And these these women have been complaining for years about this lack of stuff. And I went straight to the boss and I just I was just like, right, I am gonna have my notice in my hand tomorrow. If I arrive here tomorrow morning and you do not have any stuff, I will hand in my notice. I'm not even gonna listen to your answer. And I stormed out the door. And then I came back in the morning and I swear to God, I opened the door, the music was playing. The children were like in a room reading books. It was all sectioned off. Uh, and that, so, so the women are just looking at me like, what the fuck is this guy? And what's he done? Like, what did this shit happen? <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. I don't know what's going on. But, but it doesn't matter because I just feel really chilled out. So it's just like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, fucking madness. Madness. Yeah, are you getting, I mean, when, when the piece is really deep, is, is that when the I kind don't. of, it's not working? Like Last that? night it got pretty deep and I was, okay. I was like super long neck, just sort of got really like slight. And like, dum, 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 dum. Um, but I feel like I've never, like there's a couple of times I've kind of sunken into a kind of bliss, but very short lived, just a few seconds. I don't know, we're probably deep, but I don't know. But again, I don't, I'm not really, I'm not trying to make it deep because it's just, it's such a relief just to be able to sit on a chair and not be agitated. That I'm deepening, not deepening, fuck it, it's great. I yeah, because it. it. normal, normally, we can't do that, can we? We cannot sit still. Yeah, That's exactly. And I've never been able to, I don't think. And that's the once you, I just, this change has been so sudden that I'm just like, what? Just looking out the window, like, I've been here for 20 minutes. Like, last night I was in the bath. I was like, how long have I been in here? Anyway. Yeah, it's how, lo how long has it been like that for? Like um, well, a couple of months, I think. Okay. I was talking to you last time. We might have yeah. like, taken acid and I had these knots in my back that come on. I was like on an NSD and I'd had a really effective yoga session that day, that day. But then I, when I think back, I was like, I think it started earlier because there was just, I think it's just been coming on slowly, but then it's kind of ramped up and, it, and the changes have become very, very pronounced. Like the bodily change is very pronounced. And there's no fear, there's no fear with like... No, no, that's I mean, that, weird that thing. throat one was, that's... Pr no, um, there's no fear. I, just, I trust amazing. it implicitly. I'm like, do what you're going to do, man. You, you, you're the boss. Oh, that's man. awesome. Yeah, man. <laughs> I love this shit. I don't know what's going on, but I love it. <laughs> and when you were angry at, in the school, mm. were you actually angry or just anger was coming through? No, no, this is the thing. There was a real clarity to it. It wasn't coming from uh, attention. Mm. It was just very like, this is what's going to happen. Da 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 da. There wasn't, and then, and then the moment I walked out the door, it was fine. Uh, you know what I mean? It just. This, this needed to be said and, and that was it really. I didn't feel like, and it, you know, it was really interesting as well, as like when I was shout before I went to talk to the boss, when I was in the, the room with the kids, um, and I was saying, I was saying, I was like, am I the only one that cares about these children? And this, and this kind of thing. And there was a bunch of kids there, like five or six in the room, and I was really worried that they were gonna get really scared and start crying, oh, he's shouting, but they were just staring at me like, it's kind of like, oh, and, and, and there was this little kid called Elliot, and, and as I'm shouting, he's there, and he's looking up at me like this, <laughs> big smile on his face, and, and as I'm shouting, I'm like, you're right, Elliot, how you doing? Right, uh, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know what's coming from, I can't claim any of it, because I don't know what fuck's going on. Mm. Oh, it's um, weird, the kids weren't afraid. No, yeah. they were just uh, stood there, with a kind of, like, like this, like, He's our hero. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. <clears throat> I can imagine if that was coming from a place of ego in that moment, like a you know a, your own personal anger, you would have come out of there and probably felt like exhausted. And, oh no, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the kids probably would have been scared. Like a clean right. energy. Clean. Mm. That's the only way to describe it. Really yeah, clean. Yeah, yeah. And no regrets. Nah, man. That Fantastic. place is so much better now. <laughs> <laughs> the staff everywhere. It's Could you run the country, please? <laughs> 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 yeah, madness. Absolute madness. But I think I was, I was like you said, I had a very tra traumatized, tra traumatized childhood. Just lots of so much tension and stuff. Not due to any circumstances that I know of, unless there's like repressed memories and stuff like that, which I suppose it could be, but 
but but yeah, I was always very like into like I had this like shell of self confidence, and I suppose once that started to be pierced through, it was just like bah! you know, it's just mm. like uh. um, that's what it feels like. You know. Was there anything in the lead up to that that you couldn't identify, or or did it seem to like come out of the blue? Uh, to the 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 the, the awakening of Kundalini. Yeah. Um, it seems to come out of the blue, but but the more I think about it. I've been sort of, I'm one of these people that have been changing very rapidly through the course of my life, like I've always like a year, people have commented, it's like, oh you're really different now than, even though, than you were a few years before, so there has been a progression going on, I just didn't link it to non-duality and everything like that, but now okay. that I look back, I think it was just this really slow lessening of self that was, um, and, then, and then I came across non-duality, and now I think it was just all part of the same. Okay. Um, process. But, but, but no, I can't, I can't find an event that, that keeps it all on. Exciting. Weird.